Neve here from Radio.com. From the outside looking in, DJs make radio look easy. I know, I know. We're amazing. But there's a lot going on behind the scenes that you don't see. It's his co-star. It's a fair question. Thank you very much. But I I was just just cut off for the first time ever. (laughs) Peek behind the curtain and get to know 20 radio industry secrets that they'll never tell you. This video is made by Radio.co. To start your free Radio.co trial in seconds, head to Radio.co and click on the pricing page. Number 20. Equip yourself with a comfy chair. Every office worker knows this, but sitting in the same chair for eight hours a day can get a... I'm just the tiniest bit uncomfortable. Sitting on a really bad chair for eight hours a day, well, that only adds fuel to their fire. For DJs, being match fit is a good idea. No one wants to listen to a grumpy presenter. Standing desks, I'm told, are also useful. They keep you alert and open up your diaphragm so that you sound clearer when you speak. I wouldn't know, of course. I'm not getting up got a comfy chair. Having height adjustable microphones is also super helpful because it means you're free to move around. Stations like Radio X utilize this kind of microphone so that you can sit, stand, have a little water around. The station's your oyster. Number 19, station gossip matters. No matter where you are, you're never too far from gossip, even in radio studios. People working together for long hours are bound to spread rumors and have a little bit of chit chat. But these are actually a successful radio DJ's fuel. Witty anecdotes and playful banter between colleagues give shows personality. So even though chatting with Dave on reception isn't quite part of the job description, it's still a trick of the trade for any successful radio DJ. Number 18, pay attention. Presenting can often feel like you're talking to yourself, but there's always someone listening, so keep things professional. Whether you're broadcasting through the graveyard shift or your listenership is just slightly lower than usual, always bring your A game and never, ever go full partridge. Today we're talking condiments. You're stuck on a desert island, you're allowed one condiment. Which is it to be? John in Sproston. Ketchup. Harry in Bodham. Mustard. Kev in Norwich. Gravy. That's not a condiment, it's a hot sauce. A pistol then. That's a brand of gravy. Bronson pickle then. And that's a relish. It's eight minutes to 12 in less than one hour. Mustard. Myself. Number 17, radio is really competitive. Most industries are competitive and radio is no different. DJs have to work incredibly hard to get a good position and even harder to keep it. Unless you've reached national treasure status, it can be a little bit hard to grasp onto a radio role. But healthy competition is a good thing. It keeps presenters on their toes and always learning from each other, pushing the envelope. Number 16, red tape is everywhere. Bureaucracy is everywhere from government to radio but simply being a radio presenter doesn't give you the freedom to say what you want on air for example in the us there's the fcc that regulates terrestrial radio so saying offensive or inappropriate words can land you a hefty fine of 500 dollars. keep it clean people keep it clean number 15 nobody likes a dj diva Radio is all about personality, so it can be hard to switch off when not behind the mic. Being a diva, a drama queen or too much trouble to work with will give you a bad radio rep and it means you won't be sticking around for long. So play nice, kids. How many times have I said I don't Um, like people doing studio tours while I'm on the air, so if they ignore me, I'm going to do the show from here where no one can stare (laughs) at me through the window like I'm a monkey in a cage! Number 14. You can't rely on producers for everything. Quick wit and a dashing personality only gets you so far in radio. Being able to fully run the station means you're not reliant on producers or engineers. When no one's around, you'll be in charge. During the global pandemic, DJs took to creating their own radio studios at home. So they can talk the talk and they can walk the walk. Number 13, disaster strikes more often than you'd think. Accidents happen, whether that's technical or human error. Good presenters just keep rolling with the punches. Every station uses different software. Back in the day, radio stations were analog. They have enough dials and doodars to make even the space station jealous. But these days are different. Digital radio means software, and there's plenty of software to choose from. Hey you, yes you, did you know you could start your very own radio station right now for free? Yes, for free. Simply click the link in the corner to start your seven day free trial today. Radio stations don't all have industry standard software, so whatever worked for that particular station, the DJs need to adapt quickly. Speaking of which, get to know which software is available. Whether that's broadcasting live or automating shows, get to know what you need. 
link in the comments. Number 11, DJs must follow broadcast guidelines. If you've ever listened to commercial radio, you'll know how overplayed radio idents can get. That's because of station guidelines. These are rules in place to give shows identity and a more consistent feel. Things like you should talk after X amount of songs or only jingle on the intro, not the outro. If you've got dozens of DJs, a rule book helps to maintain a single voice and brand. That way your listeners get completely familiar with who they're tuned into. Here's the sport. No, it's not. The it's M6. the travel. <laughs> the M6. The M6 on the way to Wimbledon. No, it's not that one. It's this one. It's not that one. headlines. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Sorry, Claire. Claire's gone running back to her desk. <laughs> Number 10. Some shows aren't actually live. Broadcasting live 24-7 is a full-time gig. So don't be surprised if the shows you listen to aren't actually live, especially around the holiday season. DJs pre-record and schedule shows to go on while they're not around. And time checks are mimicked to make sure broadcasts feel like they are live, even when they're not. But scheduling ahead is a godsend for smaller broadcasters. It helps stations keep everything ticking over. Number nine, songs have to fit the station's music policy. There is a reason why you don't hear death metal on smooth radio, though personally, I think it would be a good change of pace. Broadcasters have a music policy. These are rules that say what you can play and what you can't play all within a 24 hour cycle. Or for example, if you're home to a popular band, then you'll want to sprinkle a couple of their tracks in. This is why Oasis was played non-stop in the 90s and the 2000s in Manchester. And even now, come to think of it. Number eight, guests need to give consent. Airing your dirty laundry makes for some interesting viewing and listening, but you need consent sent to air the content. So you can't just ring someone up, expect the magic and move on. In big productions, guests will often speak to one of the members of the team to get permission before it even hits the presenter. Number seven, prank calls are fake, sort of. Just like the previous point, radio stations need permissions for calls, including prank calls. So before the caller can even get through to a presenter, broadcasters gain permission to air the call. Take the popular Australian show, Hamish and Andy. Paul speaking. Oh, good night, Paul. It's Andy speaking. Hey, mate, I'm just uh, calling up with a bit of a prank. Okay. Yeah, you're the guy to speak to about timber? Yes, mate. Fantastic. And like, you're good with all the measurements and stuff as well? Uh, yep. Tell me what you need and I'll see if I can help. Great. Because I was just wondering uh, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? <laughs> Number six, be prepared for sweary callers. Everybody swears. I can't lie, I've been holding back some effing and jeffing whilst trying to record this. But well, live radio can't easily be edited, not unless you've got software to beep out colourful language. This is why guests are pre-warned beforehand. Uh, and of course, here, this is your swear button. So if you've suddenly got the urge to say words like, I don't know, You know, words like that, you know, just use this and you'll be absolutely rosy. Number five, DJs don't have much say over playlists. DJs can't play what they want, at least not on big stations. Everything has to be planned in advance to appeal to a demographic and fit the station's music policy. This is why you don't hear Jazz FM broadcasting grime. Again, that would be enjoyable. But that's where independent radio steals the show. With greater flexibility and range, smaller broadcasters have more control over what they play and create. And actually, what they say. Number four, guests are awkward. Every town has that one guy who won a contest 20 years ago and he can't move on. They can be a hassle, but they really draw listeners in and it gives you a chance to flex your presenting muscles. Number three, only superstars make millions. Considered a labour of love, radio isn't for those who are seeking out overnight success. Independent broadcasters, they sell merchandise, run fundraisers, events. There's plenty of ways that radio stations can make money. Check out the article below. Number two, celebrity interviews are sometimes fake. Ever wondered how celebrities are seemingly everywhere during press junkets? Fake interviews are mocked up to save time and reach wider audiences. They also work around the schedules of celebrities. Conversations get pre-recorded and edited down to appear as though they are live. An industry insider from Australia states that it's normally down to time zones. The big stars are often on the phone from the US or UK, meaning they're only available to chat when our show isn't on air. It's also much better for us to pre-record because we can speak to a celebrity for 20 minutes and then edit it down, meaning you only get to hear the best five minutes from the interview. 
Then we can determine how strong the interview is before it goes to air, which dictates what time we'll play it during the show. Number one, presenters can't always ask good questions. Annoyed your favourite DJ didn't ask the right questions during an interview? That's because guests have no-go areas. Pre-approved beforehand, the questions are often well thought out before the show even begins. And even then, it's not unheard of for guests to pull out mid-interview if they don't like the direction the interview's going. What, what do you say to your fans who are desperate to know about you and your co-star, Kristen? What, what can you tell them? <laughs> what can you tell them about it? It's out, they can tell, I can tell them to watch the moon. Wait. And there you have it, 20 radio industry secrets that DJs would rather you didn't know. But are there any we missed? Share away in the comments. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, the whole shebang. Until next time, take care and happy broadcasting, you budding radio DJs. And just before you go, have you ever thought about launching your very own internet radio station? Surprisingly, it's a lot easier than you may think, especially when you make the time to chat to myself or a member of the Radio.co team. To do just that, head to our website, radio.co forward slash demo, where I can talk about your plans, any questions you may have, and you know, me and the team can really get you up to speed in launching your own internet radio station in literally minutes. It couldn't be easier. Why not check out some of our webinars, tutorials, help guides, situated uh, around me or why not visit our website radio.co or even drop me an email studio at radio.co until next time take care and happy broadcasting